Thanks. Thanks to you at home for being here. We have breaking news tonight in the investigation into Trump's handling of top secret classified government records that wound up at his Florida Beach Club. The Trump appointed judge has tonight denied the government's request for a partial stay of her special master ruling. Last week, Judge Eileen Cannon ruled that she will appoint a special master, an independent third party, to review the 11,000 seized records that the FBI retrieved from Trump's home nearly 40 days ago. And in response, the Justice Department begrudgingly said, OK, go ahead and appoint that special master, but please exclude those roughly 100 classified documents we seized from Mar-a-Lago, because we need to continue the criminal investigation into these classified documents due to potential national security concerns. Also, a second intelligence assessment into the potential risks and harms that may have been caused by having those top secret classified documents hanging out at Trump's club the Justice Department argued that that assessment could not continue without the FBI's assistance. Now, tonight, Judge Cannon has denied that request. She said, basically, tough luck. Judge Cannon wrote in her order, quote, the court cannot abdicate its control over questions of privilege and does not find the government's argument sufficiently convincing as presented. Not sufficiently convincing, Department of Justice. There has been no actual suggestion by the government of any identifiable emergency or imminent disclosure of classified information arising from plaintiffs' allegedly unlawful retention of the seized property. In other words, she did not agree with the government's argument that her order not only delayed their criminal investigation, but by impeding the parallel intelligence assessment, would harm our national security. And Cannon clarified the FBI is free to participate in the intel assessment. Quote, the temporary restraint does not prevent the government from continuing to review and use the materials seized for purposes of intelligence classification and national security assessments. So just go on, keep doing what you were doing, even though you say it's not possible. This is tough news for the Justice Department and potentially the intelligence community. Judge Cannon did officially name the special master who will oversee the review of these government records tonight. And she has appointed Raymond J. Deary, a senior U.S. district judge for the Eastern District of New York. He's a man who was appointed by Ronald Reagan. Deary was first suggested by Team Trump as one of their two picks for special master. The Justice Department later agreed that the senior judge would be a good pick. But it is clear that the government would really like this special master. If it's Judge Deary, they would really like him to work expeditiously. The DOJ had asked that if a special, a special master indeed was appointed, that he or she wrap it all up by mid-October. Well, tonight, Judge Cannon ruled that senior Judge Deary should conclude his review by November 30th or thereabouts, because that date could potentially slide. In addition to all of these apparent concessions to the former president, Judge Cannon also said that Trump's team will get a chance to review everything with the appropriate security clearances, of course, but that is a big win for the former president. He potentially gets to go over all of this classified material, much of which he no longer has the clearance to review. It is worth noting here that Judge Cannon does not accept the government's assertion that they seized roughly 100 classified documents in the first place. She casts serious doubt on whether or not those documents are actually indeed classified, and you can almost hear the mistrust of the government in her ruling tonight. Quote, in isolating the described documents from the larger set of seized materials as 100 classified documents, the government effectively asks the court to accept the following compound premises, neither of which the court is prepared to adopt hastily without further review by a special master. The first premise underlying the motion is that all of the one, approximately 100 documents isolated by the government are classified government records and that plaintiff therefore could not possibly have a possessory interest in any of them. The second is that plaintiff has no plausible claim of privilege as to any of these documents. So basically, the judge is saying, I am not ready to accept that those 100 documents are classified. Who are you to say that, DOJ? The Justice Department told the court last week that they will appeal this ruling to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. So keep an eye out for that. This ruling is a doozy, and we have a lot to unpack here. Joining us now is Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan. Barb, thanks so much for being here to help decipher what's going on. Let me just first ask you, what is your reaction to this ruling that seems to be a gift to Donald Trump, at least from the, the initial assessment of what's happening here? Yeah, it's really astonishing, Alex. You know, the Justice Department threw her a lifeline and Judge Cannon threw it right back. 
uh, really doubling down on this idea. And as you say, it just drips with uh, uh, distrust of the government, saying just because they say they're classified, how do we know they really are classified? And how can you say that Donald Trump has no possessory interest in them? And how can you say there's no privilege? Classified documents must be stored in a skiff. These are stored in a basement. Uh, the idea that he somehow has a right to these documents is really, I think, completely beyond uh, dispute. Um, but I will say there are a couple things uh, carved out here that are not bad. One is she met the OJ's deadline. They wanted a, a decision by today. She didn't have to follow their deadline, um, but she did. So that was good because the case is moving along and it's not dragging uh, any more than is necessary. The other thing is she did clarify that that intelligence risk assessment that the Justice Department wants to do can include members of the FBI to the extent it is inextricably intertwined with criminal aspects, interviewing of witnesses or fingerprinting or other things. They can go ahead and do that. And I think one worry was if they did that, then any of those witnesses who were involved later in a criminal case would be deemed tainted and an ultimate conviction could be thrown out. And so I think she's included some clarifying language there that could actually be helpful in conducting that assessment. Do you th so you think that's a meaningful carve out, that that will assuage some of the FBI's concerns here? Well, no, I don't think, I, I do think it's a meaningful car about, I don't know that it will assuage all their concerns. It does allow them to conduct that risk assessment, which was really the most urgent thing that can be done. I think these other things are wrong, and I think the Justice Department will appeal on those bases to clarify uh, the law as an institutional matter going forward, that someone who is the subject of a search cannot at this stage challenge the use of those things. That comes later after an indictment. Here, I think the judge is even saying explicitly she is going out of her way here because she believes that Donald Trump's reputation could suffer irreparable harm. That is really treating him differently than any other litigant gets treated. And so I think for those institutional reasons, the Justice Department does have to appeal this order. But I think at least with regard to that risk assessment of the intelligence community, that can go forward now. And she's given them a little more leeway to include the FBI in that, which is essential because the CIA cannot conduct investigations on U.S. soil. An important distinction. Uh, the other thing that stood out to me is the notion that Trump's team can see everything that was seized, including yeah. classified material. For seized materials, make available for inspection by plaintiff's counsel with controlled access conditions, including necessary clearance requirements. And under the supervision of the special master, the documents marked as classified and the papers attached to such documents. Is that problematic? It, it is, Alex. The idea of classified documents is that only those with a need to know within the intelligence community should even be looking at these things. Now, we don't know who uh, Donald Trump will use to be his lawyer in this instance. It may be Evan Corcoran or Christina Bob, or it could be Rudy Giuliani. Uh, these people are going to have access to the crown jewels of our classified in intelligence information. And as we've heard, there's some pretty uh, explosive stuff in here relating to the national defense. Having that information in the hands of people who are not reliable government actors is definitely a risk to national security. I, 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 the other piece of this are, are, is the timeline. The, the government has wanted to wrap this up pretty expeditiously. We are now given an extended deadline here from Judge Cannon to November 30th, but there's kind of an appeals process for every batch of documents that either side takes issue with in terms of classification. Could this slide into next year, Barb? I'm afraid it could. Now, one thing she did say is that she asked Judge Deary to prioritize these 100 or so classified documents. So he will look at those, make a decision, and turn them over. But of course, that's where all the action is. I could imagine uh, Donald Trump uh, making an argument there. Uh, after Judge Deary makes his ruling, Judge Cannon will be able to make her ruling. And from there, there could be appeals. So, you know, this has always been Donald Trump's game. Uh, run out the clock, delay, 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 stall as long as possible. But I don't know that he can stall long enough for this case to uh, run aground in terms of the 2024 election. I think at some point it, it may get delayed by a matter of months, but I think at some point this case will come to fruition. And I, I do think based on all that we know, it seems impossible for the Justice Department to decline pursuing criminal charges here unless there's some new fact of which we are currently unaware. 
Well, we do know that they probably, the next move is probably to appeal this to the 11th Circuit of Court, Court of Appeals. Six of the 11 judges on that are Trump appointees. Barb McQuaid, former U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan, thanks for your time and expertise tonight. I want to bring into the conversation Ben Rhodes, former Deputy National Security Advisor for the Obama administration and an MSNBC analyst. Ben, thank you for being here on such short notice in the middle of a breaking news hurricane here. Um, First, I want to get your thoughts on the disdain with which this this judge is treating the national security community, the Justice Department, questioning whether or not these records are even classified. Again, as a reminder, Washington Post reporting on September 6 that there are documents describing a foreign government's military defenses, including its na- nuclear capabilities, in the tranche of documents that ended up in a broom closet down at Mar-a-Lago. What did you make of that language, and what do you make of her posture? Uh, as it relates to national security? I mean, I I think it's totally reckless. It's a little bit insane, Alex. And and we see these filings, you know, they have the look of legal documents. It bestows a legitimacy on them. But this makes no sense. Uh, And this is a judge that has no background whatsoever in national security. Her main qualification is that she would be a rubber stamp for Donald Trump and the Republican Party's agenda. And if you think about the classification issue, just to give one example, I had the highest security clearance in the U.S. government for eight years. There's a cover sheet that has the classification on it. Every single page of the document is stamped top secret or secret. There's not a question as to whether these are classified. That's an absurd thing for her to be asserting. It's marked all over the documents themselves. The Justice Department, as part of the intelligence community, is well aware of what the classification status is of these documents. And so she's basically imposing like a Trump defense rationale onto her own legal opinion, and it has nothing at all to do with the underlying reality that there are 100 classified documents that uh, apparently have very significant and sensitive secrets of the U.S. intelligence community in them uh, that are just going to be passed around here in some process that's totally unnecessary, and that's going to disrupt the government's ability to understand why Trump had those documents. And by the way, Alex, to understand, as DOJ said in its filing, why there are like 50 doc- document folders that are marked classified that are empty in Mar-a-Lago, too. They need to try to understand whether there are more documents out there. Uh, and so this is just throwing a wrench into the gears in a way that is totally disrespectful of any equity that the national security and intelligence community might have about why these documents were Mar-a-Lago in the first place. Well, and, and like, let's keep in mind that the people, the FBI agents who were tasked with reviewing these documents, some of them did not have the security clearance necessary to review the classified documents. And now, because of this order from Judge Cannon, I mean, you could feasibly have a former CrossFit lawyer or Rudy Giuliani looking over some of what Barb McQuaid called the crown jewels of our national security infrastructure. I mean, that prospect should terrify everyone, regardless of party affiliation. It should. I mean, I'll just take one example of what's been out there in the press, right? This Washington Post report about information about a foreign nuclear weapons program, right? This is not like a memento that Donald Trump had on the wall. This is not a letter from a foreign leader. This is a report presumably prepared not just for Donald Trump, but for people who need to know about that foreign country's nuclear weapons program. The information in that document, which is certainly more than one page, would include sources and methods of intelligence gathering, multiple sources and methods of intelligence gathering, perhaps signals intelligence and intercepts, perhaps information derived from human sources who are out there in the world right now today, wondering whether or not somebody might have compromised the information they provided to the U.S. government, whether or not they might be in danger. These are the questions that are on the forefront, I'm sure, of the minds of the people at DOJ. And the only question that seems to be on the forefront of the mind of this judge is how she can run political interference for Donald Trump. And I think we have to call this what it is. This is not normal. There's not like a lot of precedent for what this judge is doing. Alex, if I had these documents here in my basement, like in Los Angeles, I'd be in prison right now. Like I couldn't walk out with 100 documents. You know, we just have to bear in mind what we are watching is there are two systems of justice in this country, according to this judge, one for every American and one for Donald Trump. And the idea that we even entertaining a conversation where one of these lawyers is going to be sitting there reviewing nuclear weapons information about another country just to satisfy Donald Trump's desire to sow some seeds of doubt about what the government's doing here. 
Th- that's an absurd role for a judge to be playing. Well, and thus far, the judicial system has acted as a check on Trump's ambitions, right? And this, and we now have a judge explicitly calling a page from the Trump playbook, saying even-handed procedure does not demand unquestioning trust in the determinations of the Department of Justice. The institutional atrophy has now infected the judicial branch, and branch, and we are watching it play out before our very eyes. Yeah, I mean, Alex, you know, you and I have talked about like authoritarianism a, a good bit over the, the years. It sounds like a fun uh, conversation to people watching. But but really, one of the things that I point out, uh, as you know, as I've looked at authoritarianism in different countries, is the first thing that would be autocrats do when they're trying to shift a democratic system to an autocratic system is they try to pack the courts with judges who will find in favor of their power grabs. We've seen this everywhere from Russia to Hungary. And so what Donald Trump tried to do is appoint people who are highly unqualified in certain cases for their positions, including this judge, for that matter, uh, whose main bona fide was fealty to a Trumpian agenda. They weren't subtle about it. They picked people who were very young, very inexperienced, who come up through a pipeline of judges who were very ideological. And we are seeing the results of this across American life. We obviously see it at the most extreme level in the Dobbs case in the Supreme Court. But bear in mind now, there are judges in the system that, that it's, it's not whether or not they disagree with my particular philosophy of governance, it's not whether they disagree even about certain aspects of what's in the Constitution and what's not. This is someone inserting themselves into like a fairly routine criminal prosecution when you consider what uh, Trump has taken with him outside of the government. Nobody could deny that it's a crime to take 100 classified documents down to your basement in Mar-a-Lago uh, and creating you know, rationales to throw sand in the gears of that process and to shift the rule of law so that it's not the equal administration of justice in this country. And so the national security is secondary as an interest to Donald Trump's personal legal interest and his reputational interest. That's that's actually what she says here, you know. And and so I think we have to see this as part of the danger to democracy that we're facing, not just the danger to national security, but the danger of, of this kind of radical approach to a judiciary that, that puts the interest of a political actor above the national interest. It should be distressing, not just the ruling itself, but what it signifies more broadly. Ben Rhodes, former Deputy National Security Advisor in the Obama administration. It's always good to see you, my friend. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Alex.